We're good. All right, let's do it. Okay, so it says we got. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll go away. Do I have to touch something? Go away. Oh, there you go. All right. So we have a 13 foot ladder leaning against a vertical wall um, when its base starts to slide away. We kind of did a problem like this already, didn't we? Okay, this is the real one. This is the one. Okay, so here we go ladder. If your ladder is not perfect, then you mark, you, you lose points. No. 13 foot ladder. This is not changing. That's a constant. So we have a 13 foot ladder, and we'll call this side X. We'll call this side Y. Now, if I were to do the derivative of this side, derivative of this side, the derivative of X would be called what? Dx dt. And the derivative of Y would be dy dt. Okay, so the ladder is going this way. So is the rate at which this is changing positive or negative? Is this getting positive or is it getting negative? Positive. It's positive. So this answer will be positive. This answer right here, dy dt, this is falling. The ladder's as the ladder's slipping out. This is falling down, so dy dt should be negative. So the question is, what do they want? We're going to want one of them. So 13 foot ladder is leaning against the vertical wall. When its base starts to slide away, by the time the base is 12 feet from the house, by the time it is 12 feet from the house, the base is moving, the base, this right here, dx dt, is moving at a rate of 5 feet per second. The derivative is 5 feet per second. Positive or negative? Positive 5. You guys cool with that? What is the rate of the top of the ladder? That's the question. We want to find dy dt. And it's going to be a negative answer. Oh, it's negative 12. All right. Here we go. So uh, the algebra involved, or the, I'm sorry, the geometry involved is the Pythagorean theorem. Um, at a given moment in time, this is 12. At that moment that this is 12, this is always 13. But at the moment that this is 12, you guys know this by heart. Did you learn this in geometry class by heart? Three, you know, three, four, five, don't you? And six, eight, ten, all those things. Do you know the 12, 5, 13? Yeah, some of you do. And if you don't, that's fine. You just do this. You go um, y squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Uh, y squared uh, plus 144 equals 256, I think, right? 169. 169. Uh, 169. All right. And you get a calculator. It's a calculated part of the test. Minus 144 from both sides. Minus 144, and you get y squared equals 25, so y must equal 5. All right, so at this moment in time, y is 5. Okay, now you come over and you got to have some kind of geometric formula, like the area of a circle or uh, Pythagorean theorem or the, the area of a box or whatever it is, the area of a rectangle. Um, and it's a squared, or actually we're going to use x squared plus y squared equals you know, z squared or something like that. Okay, x is, we don't know it, it's a given, you know, it's a, it's a changing thing, it's a changing thing. This one is changing, but this one is not changing. It is always 13, always. So this is the one thing that changed from the first time I taught you. That is a constant. The ladder doesn't change. As this goes down, there's no derivative right here. So we do the derivative, and the derivative of uh, x squared is 2x. But since I took the derivative of x, you write dx dt, dx dt, plus 2y, derivative of y is 2y, dy dt equals the derivative of a constant, which is 0. Okay, do we know x? Do we know y? Yep, we do. 2 times x is, uh, at this moment in time, is 12. And dx dt is 5. 
plus my recording I am uh, two and then y at that moment in time was five. And the thing we're trying to find is dy dt. All right. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10 times 12 is 120 plus 10 dy dt equals 0. Bring the 120 over here. We get 10 dy dt equals uh, negative 120. So get it, bring it over here. You got a subtraction from both sides. Divide by 10. Divide by 10 dy dt, or the rate that the height of the ladder is changing is negative 12. There's your answer. Not that bad. Related rates, not that bad. You guys okay with that? Any questions? Okay, now another one. So related rate here, another one related rate here. Okay, number nine. Now it looks bad. It's not though. Not bad at all. There's another question like this, another hard one like this, on the first part. I think it's like number four or something. But it's not that bad. Okay. Another related rate. It says the radius of a circle is increasing at a non-zero rate. So it's getting bigger. And um at a certain instant in time, the rate of increase of the area of the circle is twice the rate of increase of the circumference. At this instant, the radius of the circle is. That sounds really confusing. But I, I see they said area of the circle, and I know it has something to do with the geometric formula, which is area of the circle, which is pi r squared. If I were to do the derivative of this, What's the derivative of a b? d a d t is equal to. Now this is just three. So if you're doing the derivative, like treat it like it's an x. Three x squared. This would be two times three or two pi. And then and not x it's r r. But since I took the derivative of r, you write d r d t. So I knew it had something to do with the geometric formula and then with something to do with the area of the circle. And circumference of a circle. So let's do circumference of a circle. So circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. By the way, on the test, if you guys have a question on a formula, just tell me and I'll write it on the board. So no formula sheets, but if you're like, Ziegler, what's the what's the derivative of e to the stuff? I'll write e to the stuff, derivative of the stuff, because that was on the formula sheet, right? So whatever they are, I'll write them all on the board so you'll have whatever you need, but you're not going to need. Or what's the secret? PSST. And I'll write what the, the things are. Or the sine cosine thing. Sine sure, of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine, negative sine, all that good stuff. Okay? So you want it? I'll put it up there. Not a problem. Okay, back to this. Derivative of C would be DC, DC, DT is equal to, okay, uh, oops. Yeah, the CDT is equal to, okay, now this is really like six. This is like six. The derivative of six x, the derivative of six x is just six. But it's not six, it's two pi. Okay, six. You guys go, no r? But since I took the derivative of r, what do you write? dr dt. So far so good? So we have a little calculus for circumference, we have a little calculus for area of the circle. Now, it says uh, the area or the derivative of the rate or derivative of area is twice the derivative of circumference. Right means derivative. So the area one is twice as big. This thing right is twice as big as this one. Are they equal? No. This one is twice as big. So watch this. So we got two pi. R D R D T, and then we have two pi D R D T. Now they're not equal. 
This is circumference. This is the rate or the derivative of circumference. This is the derivative of area. They're not equal. Area is twice circumference. Area, the derivative of area, is twice of this one. They're not equal. What do I have to do to make them equal? This is twice as big. Which one do you got to multiply by two? This one. Okay. If this is twice as big as this one, then to make them equal, I got to multiply this one by two. You guys cool with that? Now look at how this, you didn't even know, there's no numbers written up there. Question? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, there's no numbers written up here, but what do they really want? At this instant, at this instant in time, when this happens, what's the radius of the circle? They want you to solve for R. Where's R? It's right here. Well, besides dr, dt, that's the only variable up here. In fact, can I divide both sides by dr, dt? Get rid of them right now. Divide by dr, dt. Divide by dr, dt. Gone, gone. And we get 2 pi r is equal to 4 pi. Um, I don't want 2 pi r. I just want r. So divide by 2 pi. Divide by 2 pi. Gone, r equals 2. Boom. Answer. Done. Good stuff. Um, watch the video again if that was too quick. All right. Or ask me questions tomorrow. All right. Last hard one. That was the last hard one. The rest of them are easy. I think. I will be one like that on the test. Okay, this one. Okay, uh, you need a calculator. And we haven't had a problem like this in a long time. We've been finding zeros for a long time. This is not zeros. So it's a calculator thing, and I don't know, we've been two chapters now, we've been doing zeros. This is not zeros, this is intersect. So we'll, I'm gonna go through this one point. I'll actually toss the computer thing up. So it says, if this function and this function, at what value do the graphs, f and g, have parallel tangents? That means when are their tangents the same? When are their tangents the same? Tangents, the derivative of the tangent. Derivative will give us a tangent line. Basically, if I do the derivative of this in y1 and the derivative of this in y2 and see where they intersect, that is when they're tangents are the same. So this is going to be y1, this is going to be y2. So y1 would be 2, we're going to do the derivative, ddx of 2e to the 3x, and x equals x. And then y2 will be the derivative of 5, I took that hand, 5x from x equals x. Now, could you do these without a calculator? This one for sure. What is that? 15x squared? Sure. Okay, this one right here, yeah, you could probably do that one pretty easy too, but why? So the calculator. You don't have a lot of time to do this. You want to pump these in there as quick as you can. You only get three minutes per calculator question and two minutes per non-calculator question. So you want to take as many shortcuts as you can to save time for probably tougher problems. All right, so here it goes. Let's see if I can type this in. Uh, it's taking a little bit to load. Okay, so here it is. Um, you get, remember you guys have to be in radio. Oh, you don't have to be in radio mode for these problems, but always be in radio mode for this class. Only if they have trig in there would you have to worry, but it would be math 8 x 2 e to the 3 x All right, when x equals x, always when you're graphing derivatives, x equals x, x equals x, 
Y2, 5, F, H, F, H, 5X cubed, 5X cubed, X equals X. Okay, so I'm graphing the derivative of this, I'm graphing the derivative of this, and because I'm graphing not trig, I press math, what do you press math? Six, math six, uh, zoom six, zoom six, zoom normal, and then when you're doing trig problems, make sure you press zoom seven. But after you're done with trig, don't forget when you go back and do a normal one, go back to math six. All right, so we're doing zoom six. And hopefully it'll be in there. Here's one of them. Here's the other one. There it is right there. So it crosses right there, which looks like it's going to be negative. Um, to do this, we're not doing a zero. We're doing second, calculate. Second, calculate. And it's called intersect. We haven't done intersect in a long time. That's when two lines intersect. Uh, five. And it says first curve. So this isn't where you go left and right. This is first curve and second curve. So my first curve is the blue one. My second curve will be the red one. So press enter. Second curve, red one. Now, usually, you usually don't have to guess. On this one, you don't have to guess because it looks like it only crosses one time. Uh, it might cross. Uh, no, I don't think it will cross again. But on a problem previous to this, on the last video, uh, it crossed three times. So you would have to guess at the actual spot that it wanted. Let's go back, and I'll just guess on this one right there. And the answer is how many decimal places? So negative 0.365. That's the answer. Let's just make sure we're right. Negative 0.366. OK, so they rounded. Whatever. Still good. Wait. OK. Uh, 11. Okay, on the previous video, I did a really hard mean value theorem. This one's not as hard. But it is a calculator question, and it's got a pretty rough answer right here. So you would want to pump these into your calculator, but basically this. Mean value theorem means when does the derivative equal the slope? When does f prime equal the slope? Okay, so let's find the slope first. Um, the x coordinate is negative 1, and don't know. And the other x coordinate is 2, and don't know. So to find out what the x and y or the y coordinates for these two x coordinates are, you plug negative 1 into the original function, and you get, I don't know, I think I did it up here. Is it up here? It's 3 and 0. So when you plugged in negative 1, I think it's 3. And when you plug in 2, it's 0. So subtract the y's, 3 minus 0. Over subtract the x's, 2 minus minus 1, which is 3 over 3, which is 1. All right? So when does the derivative equal the slope? When does the derivative equal the slope and the slope is 1? What's the derivative of this? It would be 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. All right? Add 1 to both sides. Oh, can't do it. Okay? It's not going to work. We're going to have to find, oh, no, no, subtract 1 from both sides. Minus 1, minus 1, you get 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. Now, this particular problem is not factorable. This is 3x, and this is 1x. And this has to be 2 and 1, or 1 and 2. Let's just pretend like you didn't know that it wasn't factorable. No, it's not factorable. Uh, we can test them all we want, but there's a shortcut, and that's what I want to show you, on a calculator, how to do this. Okay, in order to do this, we want to know when this function is 0. Oh, let's just graph it. It's a parabola, and it's going to hit 0 twice, I think. It's either going to hit it once, twice, or none. If it's up here, it won't hit it. If it's right here, it'll hit it twice. If it just touches 
one, one spot, it'll hit a one. So anyway, I'm going to graph this, and I'm basically going to find the zeros. Now, which one am I not going to use? Well, it looks like we're going to use them both. So we got to go somewhere between one, negative one and zero, or negative one and two. So negative one and two. But if it were to hit over here, we couldn't use that. It has to be in between these two points. So on the calculator, we need to graph. Have we ever done this before? Find zeros? I don't think we've, we found zeros, but I don't think we found them like this before. So this is 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. Zoom 6. Here it is. So it hits here and hits here. So we just got to go calculate 0. We got to find this one. Calculate 0. Find this one. Second, calculate. Last time was intersect, this time it's called a zero. Enter. Anyway, they say left bound. You got to get to the left of before it crosses. So left side right here before it crosses, and right side. So enter. Right side. Enter. Since it crosses twice, you should probably guess. And the first answer is negative point zero. Oh, negative point five four eight. There it is. Second one, again, calculate zeros. Second, calculate zero. Enter. Okay, left bound. Right there, right bottom. Oh, I kind of screwed it up a little bit. Let's see if it still gives it to us. I, I should have been a little bit left of the zero. But I think when I enter my guess, it'll still give me the right answer. One point two one five. All right, here's my two answers. Let's check and see. Yeah, here they are. Boom, boom. Cool. Are both these numbers between negative 1 and 2? Mm, yep. And yes. So they both count. Both answers work. They both satisfy the mean value there. Okay. You guys haven't seen this, but a video prior to this did this exact question. It's another calculator question. Second, to see if you guys know how to use your calculator. And it says, for what values of x is the slope of the line tangent to this graph equal to 4? Okay, the slope of the line tangent to the graph, that means derivative of this. So we're going to do in y1, we're going to do 3, we're going to do the derivative of 3e to the 2x squared. And y2, what is it equal to? 4. So graph those two, intersect, and find your answer. So math A. EDX. Three. Whoa. Three. E to the 2x squared. Oops. Crap. Two. X squared. This might be weird for you guys raising a power to a power on a calculator, but you just keep on hitting this. Um, Power button, power button. Did I type that right? I think I did. And then x equals x, always when you're graphing derivatives. Second one, y equals 4. When does this function, or the derivative of this function, equal 4? Graph it. First graph right here. Next graph will come in right here. And that's the answer right there. Boom. 
again, it's intersect. So you're going to press second. Calculate. Intersect, which is five. Enter. Enter. Boom. Guess. Answer is point two eight three. Let's see if we're right. Sorry, two eight three seven, which is point two eight four. Perfect. Last one. Is this it? Done. Thirteen. Okay. Uh, I don't think we've talked about this in this class, so it's good to see. Limits. Long, long time ago, limits were sad, and now they're not sad. Let's talk about limits real quick. Okay. A limit exists if the left-handed side, or the left-hand side, this would be your left, uh, and the right-hand side meet or want to go to a certain height. They don't actually have to go to that height. They just have to go. This is not a limit. Limit doesn't exist here. And the limit does not exist here, but the limit exists here. If it's asymptote, no, that doesn't work, or these kind of things. they got to want to be at the same height right here for it to be a limit. So the first one says, which is true? As we go to 1, the answer is 2. As we go to 1 from the left, it wants to be 1. But as we go to 1 from the right, it wants to be 2. No, they don't want to go to the same height. They want to be at different points. So no, that's wrong. Okay, at 1 is the same as the limit at 3. We already found out there is no limit at 1. So no. The limit at 1, it does not exist because they don't go to the same. But at the limit at 3, there is a limit at 3. The limit at 3 is, or the height it wants to be at 3 is 1. Oh, there it is. The limit as we go to 3 is 1. It is 1. As we go to 3 from the left and right, the height of the graph wants to be 1 from both sides. That's an answer. The limit at 3 does not exist. Yes, it does. It's 3. The limit at 1 is 1. Nope. The limit at 1 does not exist. Done. Do your homework.